and two bars na naman siya, hopefully, tumasya within a... <clears throat> Okay, so we're recording now. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, I think this is the second to the last, tama ba? Second to the last meeting na natin. I don't know if I'm still the one to meet you next week. Uh, hopefully I am, pero kung hindi, uh, tataposin ko siya on Friday, all right? Though, uh, what else? Yeah, uh, we will not be able to cover everything because this is a numerical, advanced numerical analysis class. So understandably, medyo isang section lang yung numerical uh, differential equation uh, section. And there are a lot of approaches to differential equations. Kasi pag solve ng mga differential equations, be it ordinary or be it partial differential equations, and daming variables na involved. And the theory is uh, is not well, is, I mean, I was about to say not well established, pero ni pa siya ganun talaga ka kompleto. In the sense that there are still some kinds of PDEs that we know what are the correct um, or what are the necessary and sufficient conditions for convergence or for stability. Uh, nandun pa rin tayo sa ilang mga klase ng mga PDEs, dun pa lang tayo meron mga konkretong requirements for the convergence of some methods. You know? So that's why there are various methods that are being born day in and day out. So maraming mga hybrids. So ang hirap makipag-keep up dun sa, dun sa evolution ng methods in solving PDEs. And actually, um, uh, nakwento ko na yata sa inyo, um, isang buong, kulang yung isang buong SEM or dalawang semestre para sa isang komprehensibong pagtalakay sa mga uh, mga numerical methods para mag-solve ng mga PDEs. So, no? so if, if you are, um, if you're planning to do a research on, uh, or yeah, if you're planning to do research and you think you will need uh, an in-depth analysis or an in-depth uh, treatment of numerical methods for partial and ordinary differential equations, let me know para maybe we can propose a special topics class kung kulang pa yung plan of study nyo. So kasi nga, marami pang concept and I don't think I can cram everything in this particular course. And actually, last time we were just starting to talk about finite difference methods and we used this as our working example. Tingin na natin itong um, boundary value problem na to in a one-dimensional space. Ano? Nasa omega lamang tayo. And we have seen what our, what ODE theory tells us, what are the particular solutions, or what are the actual solutions symbolically. So meron tayong solution gem. Pero this will happen only for nice cases. Kasi uh, for more complicated ODEs, wala pa tayong closed form formula. When c is equal to zero, it's fine. It's already established. You have what we call the Green's function. And you will notice here that the solution is in integral form. And that's a uh, that's a clue or a hint na meron pang isang dimension dun sa pagsasolve ng mga differential equations, which is converting a differential equation into an integral equation. Uh, one reason why people do that is that numerical differentiation is, ver is very unstable. Right. Uh, it suffers from theoretical instability or uh, theoretical non-convergence because dun palang sa pagkakaderive ng methods and dami mo ng assumption about the smoothness of the the functions involved in your differential equation. And number two, usually if you have a real-world application that requires solutions to ODEs, pinapa compute natin sa isang computer. Yung, um, yung solutions, or we ask our computer to give us a numerical approximation to the to the solution of that equation. Now, the problem is numerical differentiation is very unstable, especially when performed in a machine, because it involves taking differences of two small numbers. And hopefully in your undergraduate numerical analysis, you saw the proof that taking the difference of two numbers that are small and close to each other is very unstable. Kaya ang daming nagtatry na mula sa ODE, kunin yung weak form ng equation. So you get an integral equation and now deal with quadrature formulas, take advantage of the linearity of uh, the integral operator na nagbibigay ng isang natural discretization from a continuum problem, which is your integration, into, a, uh, into solving linear equations. I will really try to do that uh, to to introduce the that topic to you on Friday. Pero ngayon tuloy lang natin yung discussion natin about differential equations and the finite difference method. 
Now, I guess we already uh, seen an example of the discretization. We look at our exemplar problem. Tapos saying na natin, okay, magdi-discretize ako sa space. And then I will really just use um, numerical differentiation formula. So uh, from your element, uh, from your elementary numerical analysis, malamang nakapag-derive na kayo ng numerical differentiation formulas, right? So meron kang um, uh, forward difference formulas, center difference formulas, backward difference formulas, and you can even dictate what the order of that particular approximation to the derivative will be. And usually it is, uh, it is, or usually, it is always based on Taylor's theorem or the Taylor series expansion for sufficiently smooth functions, all right? I was thinking na siguro ipapa problem set ko yung isang machine implementation nitong ating uh, exemplar problem na to. Pero uh, let's see, let me see. Let me let me think about that during the lecture na para i-finalize natin before we end today's meeting. So okay. So diniscretize natin siya. We get this. And then the first question we ask is when will we get a solution to the discretized version of the problem? Because your problem, you have a differential operator, say curly L, applied to the function u. You want it to be equal to a function f on um, an open interval or an open domain omega, right? Plus your boundary conditions. At yung question natin kanina, meron ba yung solution? Well, meron tayo binigay na ilang sufficient conditions, especially for specific cases of c. Say the coefficient function c is, uh, I think it should be l, uh, l infinity bar or l2. I forgot what I wrote earlier, pero um, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, the coefficient function c should be l infinity, so it should be bounded. And the forcing term little f should be an l2 function. Alam natin na meron tayo lagging uh, solution to this. But when we discretize, when we jump from the continuum problem, we try to uh, to use numerical methods to solve that uh, continuum problem. Na ibaba natin yung uh, yung problem na yon into a discrete one. Okay. Ang ating uh, ang ating uh, equation now looks like a upper h times I think I called it uh, u upper h equals uh, f upper h, right? Or b, hindi pala u upper h. Ang ginamit ko ay b. So we have the equation a upper h, which is an uh, which is a matrix na nag, uh, nananggaling dun sa discretization ng operator curly L. Kasi ang kagandahan, linear yung operator na curly L because it's just an operator involving derivatives and say your coefficient function u. So the linearity of that continuum operator translates into a linear equation represented by a matrix problem. So meron tayong makukuha matrix A upper H. The uh, superscript denotes the uh, step size or the dependence of the matrix on the step size. So meaning yung size ng matrix A nakadepende yan sa number of discretization points. And then we have U upper H, which will serve as our estimate for the solution function h but we cannot estimate it at the entire um, at the entire domain omega kasi nga this uh, finite lang yung kaya nating i-compute sa isang machine so u upper h is a vector of function values right so it is um, each of the entries in u upper h is a um, is an estimate to the function value at u at the predetermined discretization points in the domain omega and then this is equal to uh, vector b of constants, which really depends on the forcing term. Now, ang tanong ngayon, kailan tayo makakuha ng approximate solution? When will such u upper h exist? Or when will we find a u upper h? Well, for the case of o ODEs, and when you discretize it in such a way that you get a square matrix a upper h, ang atin lang condition ay invertible ba yung a upper h? So, kailangan nating bumalik sa linear algebra. Ano ba yung mga theorems na magbibigay sa atin or makakagarantee ng pagiging uh, invertible ng isang matrix? Although, when you're working with, say, inverse problems, ano, hindi na malaking problema yung invertibility. Kasi nga, kung, uh, kung hindi siya invertible, hanapan na lang natin siya ng pseudo-inverse. 
So uh, I can probably uh, link you up, uh, especially Jehan and Francis, because si Ben Paul sa kasi si IV students ko rin yun sa 255. So we talk about the pseudo inverse, which is a workaround kapag ka hindi na square yung matrix o kung yung matrix A mo ay hindi invertible, meron kang backup solution. So meron tayong tinatawag ng more Penrose pseudo inverse. So probably you, you will encounter them later. So I'll share uh, some link uh, if you will be interested to that. And uh, uh, yeah, so ang tanong ngayon ay invertible ba si A upper H? Kasi by design naman siya ay magiging uh, square matrix lang. Actually, it has a nice form. It's a tridiagonal matrix, meaning all entries aside from those, uh, uh, all entries outside the three main diagonals are all zero. So possibly ka lang magkaroon ng non-zero entries dun sa main diagonal and then the diagonals uh, right above and right below the main diagonal. Okay, so ano invertible ba si A upper H? Well, the answer is yes, because A upper H is actually symmetric positive definite, okay? And uh, from linear algebra, a symmetric positive definite matrix is always invertible. And I think we wrote a kind of rigorous proof that uh, that's the case for our matrix A upper H. So therefore, our A upper H is invertible. And the solution can easily be found using any existing linear algebra package in your programming language of choice. Uh, kukunin mo lang yung u upper h equals a inverse of b, right? So that means you will have a solution. Pero hindi lamang solution. Hindi lang existence ng solution ngayon yung problema natin. We have a solution, but the next thing we will ask is how good is that solution, all right? Gano kalapet yung solution u upper h dun sa inahanap nating solution u. Does the discrete uh, or does uh, u upper h gives a good discrete approximation to the desired function u? And one thing that we can look at is the consistency of the method, right? Which will bring us to the first um, definition that we will have, okay? So, siguro, I'll start with, um, okay, so maybe I'll start with this one. So, let L, so let curly L be a differential operator. Um, and let's consider the problem L of U applied to X is equal to F of X for all x in omega. But let me put a uh, remark here that curly L depends only, uh, depends on u and its derivatives. Though that is what I meant by saying that uh, curly L is a differential operator. So si curly L is a siyang differential operator. So ibig sabihin nakadepende siya ka u and its derivatives and some other functions, some coefficient functions that you can throw in into the mix. So for instance, in our problem, so example, so we can define L of u to be negative u double prime uh, of x, uh, wala na siyang x kasi walang x dun sa kabila, plus c of plus c times u. Ito yung operator form ng ating exemplar from above. Now the question is, when will such a differential operator be consistent, or when will be a fine? Uh, when will a finite um, difference scheme for uh, for a differential equation characterized by the differential operator uh, curly L be consistent? All right. At ano nga ba yung gusto kong sabihan when I say consistent? Kasi maraming mga maraming mga ginagamit na terms and usually they are uh, interchangeable. Depend. Uh, yeah, depending on which author you are reading, some people will uh, refer to something as consistent. Some others will call it stable. Some will call it um, convergent and so on, right? So, siguro ito na lang yung i-adapt natin na convention sa, isang, sa ating klase. So, I'll define it via consistency. So, and uh, the nice thing is, i-segue ko na, no? So, hindi ko na paghatiin yung ODE. Blur ko na ngayon yung lines between ODE and PDEs because the theory that we will develop or at least yung, uh, yung sneak peek 
maybe bigay ko sa inyo sa theory about finite different schemes is um, uh, is independent of the dimension of the function u. So ibig sabihin mo go work to sa partial at saka sa ordinary differential equation. So when I say differential equation, it could be an ordinary differential equation or it could be a partial differential equation. Okay. So let's uh, see our definition. Uh, I think this is the loan definition that we will have today, though medyo compound ito. So a finite difference scheme or uh, let's call it FDS for short, uh, is, is said to be consistent with the difference uh, with the differential equation it represents if for sufficiently, oops, smooth solution U, the LTE, I hope you remember what the LTE stands for. It's the local truncation error. We had the way back Euler's method. Um, the LTE vector uh, epsilon. Let's call the LTE vector epsilon, which will be in R to the uh, upper n. Because again, we discretized our uh, interval omega, or we will uh, we will discretize. Um, Inisip ko paano kapag kasi, uh, well, yeah. Um, let me not call it a vector, the LTE, represented by the matrix epsilon, which is the same size as your uh, solution vector U upper H or solution matrix U upper H. Kasi nga pala, posible na matrix na yung ating solution kasi Idi discretize natin yung ating solution into a grid of points. So no, hindi lang isang uh, isang linear uh, space of discrete points. Possibly meron ka ng x component, y component, so it will be a grid of points. Uh, if you are in three dimensions, mas malaki na. So uh, we will just collect all the local truncation errors on those grid points or on those discretization points into a mesh or into a matrix. It could be a multi-dimensional matrix epsilon. So dapat ito ay mag-hold. Uh, pero sige, bigay ko na yung definition ng epsilon. Uh, bawat entry ni epsilon, uh, H, ay equals uh, mm -hmm. So, hindi ko pala na-define kanina. So curly L upper H similarly is the discretized version of the uh, uh, the discretized version of our continuum problem. All right. So uh, perhaps uh, let me just see how we discretized uh, U. Okay. So. Um, let's get my own idea. Complete the incommunaton definition. Uh, L upper H of u minus uh, u upper h minus l u of x of j for all j from 1 to n. Okay. Now here uh, you can imagine uh, x of j to be say uh, it, uh, be composed of rows or columns uh, or kung linear kung uh, Kung one dimensional lang naman yung problem, pwede mo siyang tingnan as a uh, as just uh, a vector of points, you know? So um, essentially, ang tiniting ang local truncation error is what is the difference of the uh, discrete solution from the actual continuum solution, right? Kasi titingnan mo, uh, oops, gaano kaganda yung approximation uh, or yung translation mo? from the continuous problem to the uh, discrete problem, right? So tinitingnan natin ano yung difference at the grid points or at the mesh points noong discrete version ng operator at saka nung continuum, pro, uh, continuum version ng operator. So in our example, 
Uh, sige, short caveat na kasi nakalimutan ko siyang i-define kanina. No? So remember, our operator kanina, this is our curly L. Oh, dito ko na lang pala siya lalagay. Para kunwari na isulat ko siya kanina. So kinonvert natin to, itong continuum problem na to, kinonvert natin into a discrete operator, L upper H. So nakadepende na siya sa step size. Um, uh, then you apply it to a vector u upper h of your approximate solutions. And we said this is equal to, uh, diniscretize natin siya, gumamit ako, oh, sorry. Gumamit ako ng centered formula back then. So ito ay negative um, u upper j plus 1 minus 2u sub j plus u sub j minus 1 all over h squared plus c of x j u sub j. Okay. So, ito yung ating, uh, ito yung operator L, oops, sorry, bakit yun yung default color ko? So, let me go back to yellow. So, ito yung ating discrete version after you discretize. So, essentially, I hope it is now clear that the local truncation error really tests the, uh, the, uh, the goodness no accuracy or no conver uh, goodness no conversion mula sa continuum problem papunta doon sa discrete problem right so yeah at doon natin ibabase yung consistency kaya mas gusto ko sa siyang uh, ginagamit na term kasi parang mini-measure natin yung pagiging um, pagiging consistent ng problem na gusto nating isolve which is the discrete one compared to the actual problem na binigay sa atin, which is differ a differential equation, which is hard to compute. All right. So we need to observe for consistency. We need to observe the LTE, uh, the LTE, um, the LTE matrix or the LTE vector or the LTE, uh, the LTE grid. Ano siya tatawagin? For, uh, or basta tawagin ko na lang siya, the LTE, uh, the LTE structure epsilon ano para kung vector man siya, matrix man siya and so on. So titingnan natin si epsilon, anong itsura ni epsilon. So we want the local truncation error to uh, to approach uniformly to zero. So let's say the LTE represented the, by the matrix E tends to zero. With respect to x And the supremum norm SH approaches zero. Or in other words, if you're more into the math of it, you take the limit of the L infinity norm of the vector H, uh, of the vector epsilon upper H, as H approaches zero, and it should be zero. All right. So the um, uh, the uh, the error the the or the uh, LTE vector epsilon should converge um, with respect to the L infinity norm to zero as H approaches zero. So that's our criterion for consistency. And moreover, if there exists a C greater than zero, which is independent of u and its derivatives such that for all h in zero to some h sub zero for some sufficiently uh, small h sub zero we have the following inequality we have the L infinity norm of epsilon is less than or equal to C H to the P with P being positive then the scheme is said to be accurate or let's say said to be consistent at order P in the infinity norm. Okay, so basically, 
uh, tinitingnan natin dapat uh, for the for the scheme to be consistent, dapat yung difference that is incurred in the conversion from uh, from the continuum problem to the discrete problem should approach zero as the step size approaches zero. And moreover, if you can show that the error vector epsilon has a supremum norm that is asymptotically bounded above by a multiple of h to the p, then we said that the FDS is said to be consistent. Some authors call it um, FDS is, uh, is accurate at order p or uh, of order p in the given norm, which is the L infinity norm for us. Um, if the, uh, yeah. Kalimutan ko yung sentence. Super haba kasi yung sentence. Kalimutan na. But I think I completed the sentence already. So kailangan tingnan nyo kung asymptotic upper bound ba nung L infinity norm, nung LTE structure natin ang isang multiple ni H to the P. Which should remind you of the backman lando equation. So that is... So we can also say, we say that the FDS or the finite difference scheme is of order big O of H to the P, right? And we have seen examples like this. Uh, the Euler's, uh, Euler's method is a first order method, so it's big O of H to the one. And then you can have uh, Taylor's method of order big O of H squared and so on. So this just tells us that uh, the error in the conversion from the continuum problem to the discrete problem um, vanishes to zero as fast as how h to the p approaches zero. So you want p to be as large as possible, all right? So yun yung kanya order of, uh, order of accuracy or order of consistency. Some call it also the order uh, of convergence. Ano? So iba iba sila ng term. Pero dun sa, dun sa text na ginamit ko, ang um, tawag niya consistency. So I'll be consistent with that one, okay? Now, Let's see. Uh, for our particular problem, ano? so I hope uh, ginagawa ko lang lahat ng ito dun sa exemplar equations natin kasi usually ganun nga, ano? nakadepende dun sa klase talaga ng ODE or PDE o dun sa forma niya. Uh, kung elliptic yan, kung parabolic yan, tapos meron pa silang mga subcategories, doon nakadepende yung analysis kasi ang hirap gawa ng isang unified here and I think Ivy can attest to that ano? kasi siya yung mas expert sa mga uh, numerical methods for DEs and ODEs, which by the way, happy birthday, Ivy. <laughs> so, sana nasa na yung uh, paspageti at Shanghai, you know? But anyway. Damn sir. <laughs> <laughs> Kakatok sana ako sa inyo mamaya. Hindi, joke lang. Alright. So, sir, wag may mga sisi kami. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, yeah. Okay. So, lilista ko na lang. All right. So, dun sa particular problem natin, titingnan natin ano yung requirements. Uh, I think uh, may natanong na rin to last time. I think it was Jehan who asked, dun sa, dun sa sinosolve natin na, 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 na ODE, ano yung requirement para dun sa solution U? Uh, so far, we don't have any uh, any requirement on the function U. Probably at least uh, ang kailangan lang natin ay yung differentiability niya as the same order as the differential operator involved in our problem. So, Dun sa problem natin na uh, negative uh, u double prime plus c u equals f, kailangan lamang, ang requirement lamang sa solution ay dapat si u ay magkaroon ng second derivative kasi uh, the, the, the equation will not be an identity if u doesn't have a second derivative. Pero hindi sufficient na yun lamang yung mag -e exist para mag natin yung stability, yung convergence, at saka yung uh, I mean yung stability ng solution at saka yung convergence ng methods. Usually we impose something on the solution that we are looking for. Dito na natin pinapa pinapababa yung domain kung saan tayo naghahanap ng solution so that the solutions that we get are nicely behave in such a way that it will allow us to numerically estimate them. Kasi kung napakalawak ng domain mo, halimbawa maghanap lang tayo sa sa set of C2 functions, right? So, ito yung mga functions sa continuous hanggang kanilang second derivatives. Well, possibly kang magkaroon ng solution for that, uh, for our problem, negative u double prime plus c u equals f. So, space na c2, alright, of omega. Pero ang problema ron ay, kay, yung solution ba na yon ay 
kaya nating ma-approximate or will will we be able to design a scheme that will give us a nice estimate to it, right? So ito na yung papaliitin ko yung domain. Hindi doon ako maghahanap sa buong C2 ng mga solutions. Kasi ang problema ko ngayon, kailangan smooth yung um, uh, smooth as much as possible, meaning smooth as much uh, 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 of sufficiently high order, meaning the more or the more higher order derivatives niya dapat yung maging continuous. So ngayon, mag-impose na ako ng mga conditions para makapag-decide tayo kung yung method ba na yun ay magiging kung ano yung order nung, nung finite difference scheme na dinesign natin. So in our particular examples kanina, uh, um, maybe I'll call it, uh, yeah, I'll call it a lemma. Okay. Uh, let's assume that u is a C4 function. So again, that means that uh, the function itself, together with its derivatives up to the fourth order, are continuous. Uh, dito ko mag-guarantee na yung method ay consistent and is of order big O of h squared. Then the FDS defined above. And I am referring to uh, dun sa ginamita natin ng L upper H is consistent. And is of order big O of H squared. Now, how do we prove this? Well, uh, maybe sort of a sketch of the proof, right? So um, let's first recall that we are really solving or ang ating L upper, uh, ang ating L of U, I equals a negative U double prime plus CU. Okay, and our forcing term is F and uh, we will assume the hypothesis of, or the, uh, yeah, the hypothesis of the lemma. So C U I C four of omega. Then let's compute for epsilon, epsilon uh, sub j. So in this case, one dimension lang tayo. So ibig sabihin si epsilon ay isa lamang vector. So ito yung LTE vector. So from one to capital N, the number of uh, discretization points that we have, except the boundaries, kasi parang tinanggal natin yung boundaries, ano? kasi inimpose natin yung exact value dun sa boundaries. So epsilon sub j will be equal to L upper H of U sub uh, U upper H sub J, so ito yung J at entry no ating estimate, ah, nung, nung right-hand side, minus the function value under the continuum operator at the uh, specific uh, or at the same X value, X sub J, all right? And then we'll just expand this. So basically we'll have U or negative U upper J plus one minus two, but upper u sub j a uh, u sub j plus one minus two u sub j plus u sub j minus one all over h squared plus uh, c j u j right so etong terms nato eto yung nagre represent nyan right in expand ko lang yan yung kanyang uh, yan yung ating discrete operator minus the uh, actual operator uh, but evaluated at xj. So this will be negative u double prime of xj plus c of xj um, times u of xj. Okay. Compute lang natin yan. Difference yan. And uh, let's see. Okay. Oh. This guy and this guy will cancel each other out. Kasi parehas lang naman sila, no? Remember, I, I think I introduced that notation uh, uh, before. C sub J is just the function value of C of uh, the J at uh, discretization point under the function C. Ganun then under the function U. So this guy and this guy, they will cancel each other out. So we'll be left with U double prime of XJ 
minus u upper j plus one minus two u sub j plus u sub j minus one all over h squared. Okay, and this uh, this expression here should be familiar because essentially this is telling us how far is u double prime at x sub j from the discrete estimate. Pero ito yung din derived sa math 174 if you took uh, numerical analysis in UPLB. All right. If not, I think uh, you should have seen this. I think in your undergraduate, you should have seen this. So, ano, ito lamang ay yung error incurred in the central difference uh, formula for the second derivative. At doon papasok yung pagkakaroon ng smooth na fourth derivative ni u. Right. So in particular, you can recall your uh, numerical analysis, but if you want to see or if you want to compute this, titingnan niyo lang yung Taylor series expansion. Kunin yung Taylor series expansion u double prime um, up to a certain order. Uh, I think you should uh, expand it until the fourth uh, uh, the fourth order derivative and then manipulate things. Essentially, what you'll get is negative h squared over 12 fourth derivative of u evaluated at some c sub j, where c sub j is a number between x sub j minus 1 and x sub j. Say so it from elementary numerical analysis. OK, siya yung, siya yung, uh, siya yung error term doon sa central uh, sa center difference formula for the second derivative okay and then the nice thing about this is we are assuming that u has a continuous fourth derivative now i can appeal kasi wala akong idea kung ano yung mga epsilon sub j ay yung mga c sub j all i know that for each of the discretization points i will find a, uh, a number c sub j na magre-represent doon sa error term but practically, we don't uh, we don't know anything else about c sub j. So the problem is, that, can I generalize this term over here? And that's where the continuity of the fourth derivative will come in handy, because the extreme value theorem will tell us that this guy, since it's continuous and it leaves over a um, compact interval or has an open interval, siya, pero um, continuous naman siya, so magkakaroon ako ng absolute maximum either at an interior point of this interval or at one of the boundary points. Because continuous naman si, si U, so I can use a more generalized version of the extreme value theorem to argue that this will be true, that the L infinity norm of epsilon upper H, uh, remember sub vectors, ang, uh, supremum norm lang naman, ito yung maximum absolute value among the entries of the vector epsilon. So this will just be equal to the maximum the mga epsilon um, the mga entries in the epsilon upper H, J going from one to capital N, all right? And again, by, con uh, well, you can say that this is uh, H squared over 12, supremum ng um, fourth derivative over all y's in omega or not uh yeah kasi ito ay pa isa isa ko silang kinocompute pero ngayon titingnan ko ano na nga la, ano yung maximum ng uh, error vector sa buong omega all right kasi dito siya nakadepende so titingnan ko na lang siya sa buong interval omega but i have here an upper bound na lamang all right and I know the supremum exists because uh, u upper 4 or the fourth derivative of u is continuous. So extreme value theorem lamang siya. So this is uh, mh squared over 12 for some uh, m greater than 0 or greater than or equal to 0 para sure. Oh, this should have an absolute value kasi ginawa ko siyang supremum. Medyo delayed lang yung sinulat ko, pero ayan, uh, come on, yun, nagkaroon na siya ng absolute value. So we know that uh, as long as uh, uh, u upper j, uh, sorry, as long as u 
as fourth derivative, then we know that the uh, that the LTE vector will be bounded. Okay, uh, Jahan, you have a question? Uh, sorry, pwede po balik po dun muna sa yung U double prime tapos po yung central difference. Yes, uh -huh. yan po. Yan po, tama. Uh, di ba po ano po, tinrang, di ba po second, it, ang pagkakatanda ko po kasi, so second order to, so tinrangkate mo siya, dapat yung sa, yung tinrangkate mo ay of order, ano na, uh, three. And then itong second uh, that, difference po na to ay pang ano siya, approximate po siya ng second derivative. So, yep. kaya po, di ba, pag in-expand po yung Taylor, so hanggang second derivative ka plus yung the next derivative niya and so on, dun mo siya, yun mm -hmm. na yung, ano, dun po yung sa truncation. So, instead uh, of order 4, dapat po order 3. Uh, bear in mind, Jan, ito ay U double prime. Uh, kailangan ko siyang, it, uh, kasi pag nag Taylor series expansion ka, uh, ng u ng x sub j plus 1. So, meron kang u of xj plus h ng u prime of xj plus h squared over 2 ng u double prime xj. Tama ba? Hopefully, tama yung expansion. h cube over 6 u triple prime of xj. Pag dito mo siya tinrangkate, so may plus pa yan, no? so infinitely many number of terms. So, pag dito mo siya tiningnan sa third derivative, okay? So, pag dito mo siya tinrangkate, so isosolve mo ngayon si U, ah, pag dito mo siya tinigil, isosolve mo si U double prime, right? Now, to get U double prime, kailangan ito ay ilagay mo dun sa kabilang side ng equation. But if you do that, pag, pag i-isolate mo na si U double prime, kailangan mag-divide ka ng H squared. Kaya pag pinutol mo siya hanggang dito sa U triple prime, okay? So magkakaroon ka lang ng kakaroon ka lang ng h dito na matitira. So yung formula na makukuha mo from that I order big O of h lamang. But the formula that I'm using I order big O of h squared. Ang ginawa ko ang derivation ng centered formula. Probably you're remembering another formula kasi posibleng ang order 1 lamang yung approximate mo for the second derivative. But the specific formula that I use is big uh, is of order big O of h to the fourth. Kasi yung truncation niya ay h to the fourth over 24. Tapos u uh, fourth derivative. Tapos ginawa ko na tong size sub j. Alright? Tapos, uh, pag nag-isolate na ako ng u double prime, uh, so lilipat ko yung h squared over 2 times u double prime dun sa isang side. Tapos yung u of x sub j plus 1, ililipat ko to the other side. And then to ultimately get u double prime, okay, so kakailanganin kong i-divide both sides by uh, h squared over 2. Pag dinivide ko siya ng h squared over 2, ito ay magiging h squared over 12 na lamang. Kaya h squared over 12 yung nandun sa error term. But uh, yeah. Posibleng big of H lamang yung formula mo uh, na ginamit. Pero ibang formula yan dyan. So, maging iba yung coefficients. Pero that particular formula, dun ako nag-truncate dun sa fourth order. Yung fourth, um, yung may fourth derivative, siya yung reserve ko to be the error term. Uh, does that answer your question? Okay po. Pero kasi parang it looks like parang approximation for third derivative siya. Pero I think it uh, works well. So, yeah. Uh, siguro mamaya dun sa susunod ko example, pwede kong pahapyaw, pahapyawan kung paano ko, uh, kung paano na-derive to. Uh, yung, yung, yung second order formula. Pero posible ka nga makakuha ng order one formula na hanggang third derivative lang yung requirement, pero mas mabagal yung convergence nun kesa dun sa formula na binigay ko. Remember, um, posibleng siya ay centered formula of order one. But the exact formula that I'm using is a formula, a centered difference formula of order two for the second derivative. Alright, kaya medyo mag, mag, may iba yung coefficients kung dun ka magtatrangkate sa U triple prime. Alright, so mamaya, siguro puntahan natin when I derive something involving the second derivative again. 
Okay. But I think this is uh, this is right. So yeah. Kaya tama. Meron kang over 12 doon sa ilalim. So this tells us that really or that the supremum uh, the supremum norm of the epsilon vector or the LTE vector is bounded above by mh squared over 12. And uh, so if you get the limit of epsilon upper h or its L infinity norm, as h approaches zero, this will be equal to zero. Hence, uh, that is the FDE or the FDS is consistent. Then we're over. Uh, epsilon is a big O of H squared, as evident from this being bounded above by a multiple of H squared. So in capital C dun sa Bachman Landau equation, say M over 12. Okay. So that and the proof of consistency. All right. Okay, so I think uh, uh, that uh, that sh that should give you enough idea para sa pagdesign ng mga ng mga finite difference schemes. Uh, I'm thinking yung gagawin yung papagawa ko sa inyong problem set is probably a um, a um, an illustration of the entire process. Uh, either OD or PD nagde-decide pa ako pero siguro OD na lang. So I'll give you an example now uh, paano sa heat diffusion process, all right? We'll start with the heat diffusion equation, a specific uh, a specific uh, equation, a specific case. I'll walk you through the discretization process and how do we get the finite difference scheme and then I'll tell you what's the what's a necessary condition for the convergence. Uh, that's what we call the uh, current uh, Friedrich uh, Louis uh, condition or the CFL condition para rito. Don problema ang hirap i discuss in a limited time yung buong CFL theory, hindi pa nga siya kompleto, pero at least for this particular case, you will have an idea. Okay? So this example will shift to uh, will shift to a partial differential equation now. So let's look at FDS for a PDE. So uh, for this particular exemplar, let's consider the following, uh, the, heat, uh, the heat diffusion equation. Ito nga ba yung ginagawa nyo, Ivy? Uh, parang meron akong isang SP nyo na nabasa na heat diffusion equation, no? Tapos in two dimension nga lang yata yun. Tama ba? In a grid space. Uh, Apo, sir. Yes, po. Ay, in a circular. Dapat pala pinag-report na lang kita ngayon. <laughs> Bali, so yung SP namin ay uh, heat equation din, pero uh, steady state. Ah, Correct. steady state heat equation. Uh, Tapos yung isa ay uh, sa so circular domain, yung pina-SP ko po dati. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. So steady state, so free na siya sa, sa temperature, as ah, sa time variable. Tama ba? Up, oh, yes. Ah, okay, good, good. So, lagyan natin ng time, uh, time component na itong heat equation na to para makita natin. Well, um, this is usually the model for how heat travels in a, uh, in a domain. So, let's just consider, say, you know, we are in a one-dimensional domain. So, meron, na, meron lang tayong isang rod, isang very thin rod. Uh, kailangan ko ng counting dimension niya. Meron siyang counting thickness para makapag-travel yung molecules ng heat. Uh, I discussed the derivation of this equation in my Math 191 class. I can share with you the uh, the video. Uh, pero para hindi ko na siya i-discuss na. Pero the, in a nutshell, what the heat diffusion equation tries to model is how the temperature on a thin rod evolves through time. So say you have a thin rod, say uh, over the interval 0 to capital L, all right? And then uh, tinitingnan natin ano yung, uh, the temperature on this thin rod is modeled by the uh, the function u. Uh, now we will have two variables. We have a spatial variable x. This will tell us nasan tayo sa interval zero to l, and we have a time variable or a temporal variable. 
the temporal variable t, which will tell us nasa anong oras tayo, or at what particular moment in time are we uh, approximating or are we measuring the temperature at a particular point in space. So, so plug in mo lang yung point in space at yung moment in time you're gonna, uh, in the function u, then you'll get the temperature reading at that particular uh, instance. You know? So we'll have two types of variables, but I will assume that the temporal variable, uh, that the spatial variable here is only one dimensional, kaya nasa rad lang tayo. But you can extend this if you have a grid uh, or if you have a two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional space or domain. So posibleng ito ay maging two components. You have an X and a Y component. But anyway, introductory course lang naman to. So one-dimensional heat diffusion equation lamang yung titignan natin. Well, uh, si um, Fouillet and the uh, physicists and mathematicians of uh, of their time Propose the following model or observe the following model for the heat diffusion equation. They are they told us that the, the partial derivative with respect to time of your temperature function xt is equal to d capital D times um, the second derivative of u with respect to the temporal variable, and this is true for all x's in the uh, open interval 0 to L. So, dito, sa ganitong equation, ito yung equation na fina-follow nung temperature on the rod. Well, D, for simplicity, I'm going to assume that this is just a positive constant. So, we call it the diffusion constant. Okay. Uh, this would be a constant greater than 0. There's a reason why it is a... Uh, a positive constant. Now that represents all of the physical properties of the teen rod. So nanja na yung specific heat, which is the amount of heat required to, or which is the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of the rod by one uh, by one degree. Uh, ano pa ba? Uh, the thermal conductivity of your rod, etc. All of those physical parameters of the rod are lumped together in the constant D. Now, in a more generic fashion, especially if you're modeling uh, metamaterials or nano nanotechno uh, or nanotech, ano? so possibly C D I function then uh, function then ng space. Because possibly yung specific heat and thermal conductivity and other physical make uh, physical characteristics at this particular point might be different for this uh, on this point. Lalo na kung meron kang metamaterials or meron kang layers of materials put together to, to make another material. So dyan na rin papasok yung medyo homogenization theory na ginagawa rin ni, uh, nila IV and team. Ano? So posible rin nag-evolve through time lalo na kung meron kang smart metamaterials na yung, yung, yung properties ng rod ay nagbabago not just in space but also in time. So, it's a rin siyang magandang area of research. But of course, the, the more variables involved in the, the, the function D, the more complicated the, the equation would become. Because I think the, in, the, in most cases, si D dapat ay nasa loob ng differential operator. At least, kung siya ay, fun, kung siya ay hindi constant, mukhang magiging ganito yung itsura ng... Uh, no equation, or there would be some version of the heat equation that will look like this. Nasa loob yung function D, no unang partial differentiation. Uh, we are lucky that here I am assuming that D is a constant, so D can come all over, uh, can, uh, can come out of uh, the entire second derivative with respect to space. Okay. So the problem natin, and then we'll throw in some uh, some boundary and initial conditions. So let's say our uh, our uh, boundary conditions would be u of um, zero t is equal to g of t for all t greater than or equal to zero, and u of l comma t is equal to h of t for all t greater than or equal to zero. Now this boundary conditions uh, tells us that we are assuming that we know the temperature at the two endpoints at any given time. All right. So alam natin paano nagbe-behave yung temperature. So you can think of the uh, the boundaries to be something that we have access to. So if you're doing an inverse problem or a control problem, you can think of zero and L 
to be points in the rod where we can introduce heat sources or cooling sources, right? Kasi minsan ang interesting problem ay ano dapat yung ifi-feed ko na heat dun sa magkabilang dulo para ma-regulate yung temperature dun sa loob ng rod. It's just uh, an inversion procedure that needs to be carried out in solving the, the PDE. Okay, so yun yung boundary conditions. Alam natin yung temperature dun sa magkabilang dulo at any given time. And we have the initial condition. We know that uh, we know the temperature all throughout the rod at the start of the experiment. So let's, say, let's say it's at t equals zero. And let's call it uh, f of x. And this is true for all x in zero to l. And of course, we have continuity requirements. Dapat magmamatch itong uh, bounded at initial conditions at their respective intersections. Okay. So this collectively is the he uh, is uh, collectively called the heat diffusion equation. All right. So ito yung ita try nating is solve using a numerical solution. All right. Now, of course, to validate the model or validate the accuracy of the method we will be proposing, we need a specific case para lang ma-validate ko later or ma-test. Magkaroon ba ng sanity check kung tama ba yung ating pagkakaprogram or tama ba yung ating choice of, uh, of discretization or para ma-check din kung may human error or something involved in the, in the process or the, in the approximation process, right? So we need a specific example or a specific solution to this problem now, I'll give you this one. So if we take um, L to be equal to pi, uh, the heat, uh, uh, the diffusion constant to be one, and we have zero boundary conditions, meaning zero yung temperature, don sa magkabilang dulo at all points in time, and the initial conditions, so there's already a heat, or there's, also, there's already some thermal action, in the interior of our rod, let's say uh, at, at the beginning, uh, at t equals zero. So let's say this is 10 sine 2x. Okay. Anibaba, yan, yung, uh, yan yung mga parameters in setting problem. So these are the data in the problem that we will be considering because this is a forward problem. So we're, the length of the rod is pi, thermal constant, uh, diffuse, sorry, diffusion constant is one. So wala tayong internal heat sources or wala, yeah, wala tayong internal heat sources kasi inassume natin na zero lamang yung temperature dun sa magkabilang dulo at any given point in time. But initially, there's already a temperature um, dynamics in our, uh, in, our, uh, in our rod. It follows the function 10 sine 2x. So dito pala magkakaroon ka na ng idea na, okay, at yung temperature niya at, t, at time t equals zero, Tapos yung magkabilang dulo, zero in temperature, wala nang input ng temperature. And physically, we know that through time, in the absence of any heat source, temperature should vanish, right? So yun yung titignan natin. Yung solution niya dapat isang decaying. And I'm guessing it should be a sinusoidal wave kasi sinusoidal din yung, uh, yung initial condition, right? So it can be verified. So very, uh, very, Fine yun na lang, ano? so direct substitution lang naman to, that uxt equals 10 e to the negative 4t sine 2x is the solution to, let's call this uh, equation 1, with the given parameters. So, yan yung ating solution. And then you can verify it. Tapos, dito natin i-compare yung approximation na makukuha ko galing dun sa finite difference scheme na aking i-develop. Okay. So, again, the first step is we need to decide the discretization of our domains. Ngayon, meron na tayong dalawang domain. You have the spatial domain and you have the temporal domain. So, let's decide on the discretization. And I'll say I will discretize. 0 to L, or ang omega ko nga pala ay laging open, so this should be uh, the closure of omega, 0 to L. Omega is the open interval, 0 L. And I'll discretize it into M plus 2 points. M plus 2 points kasi 
uh, isasama ko yung endpoints 0 to L. I'll call it X sub 0. And then I'll call this X sub, uh, X sub capital M plus 1. Okay. Tapos meron ako ditong X1, X2, X3, all the way up to X sub M. Okay. So there would be a total of M plus 2 points. I chose this indexing. Para mamaya kasi hindi ko na, hindi ko na isasali dun sa hindi ko na isasali dun sa discretization yung uh, yung para sa values ni x sub zero ah uh, sorry ni x equals zero at sa kanya x equals l kasi alam na natin yan right we don't need to solve it kasi nasa ano na yan nasa boundary conditions na siya. so dito tayo mag-focus i-estimate natin yung temperature at the points x one to x sub m all throughout time or all throughout some moments in time na pipiliin natin mamaya. So ito yung ating mga spatial mesh points. Okay? Or our spatial grid points. Ano? So that means uh, kung meron ako M plus 2 points, ibig sabihin hinati ko yung interval 0 to L into M plus 1, um, into L plus M plus 1 subintervals. So therefore, the increment delta x between two consecutive uh, consecutive points. Oh, by the way, here I'm assuming that they will be equally spaced. So this is equal to L, the length of the original interval, divided by m plus 1. Kasi nahati siya sa m plus 1 subintervals, giving us with m plus 2 subdivision points, right? And so here, our uh, x sub i, is equal to i delta x, i going from 0 to m plus 1. Now, we have a second variable to contend with here. So, kailangan ko rin i-discretize si, uh, yung time interval natin. Now, here I am assuming that I want to get, say, the temperature at time capital T. So, meron akong terminal time na gustong tingnan because we will not get a function that will give us a temperature for all time values unless uh, ipapagran mo yung computer mo forever. Ano? So kailangan natin meron tayong terminal time for observation. So the I'm assuming here that my plan is to, or my ultimate goal is to estimate the temperature of the rod or at uh, some points in the rod at time T capital, at time T equals capital T. So ang gagawin ko, i-discretize ko yung interval zero to Terminal time capital T into n plus two moments. So that similar to uh, what we observed earlier, delta T would be T over n plus one. And then T sub J, each of the discretized moments, I equals to J delta T. Now J going from zero to n plus 1. Okay? So yun, nakapili na tayo ng discretization points at saka ng discretization moments. So ang susunod na tanong, gagawin na natin yung truncation. Paano natin i-convert yung continuum problem into a discrete problem, right? So again, we will use our good old familiar Taylor series expansion. First, we took, uh, we'll take a look at the Taylor series expansion along the, uh, the spatial domain. So, when you can expansion, the x plus delta x comma t. So, I'll just be working with one variable at a time because luckily, yung equation natin walang mixed derivative. So, either it's a derivative with respect to time lang, or derivative with respect to space. Uh, malaking problema kapag ka siya ay naging, nagkaroon ng mixed derivative, meaning meron kang partial with respect to x followed by partial with respect to with respect to t, right? So, kaya ang kagandaan niya yung kaya kong i, uh, i kunin yung expansion ng mga derivatives with one of the variables being held constant. So, in this particular case, I'm starting the uh, the expansion along the x uh, domain or the spatial domain. So if we fix ko si t. So Taylor series, uh, uh, Taylor series expansion naman, you can forget about t, just plug it in later. You know? 
So makita mo ito ay equal lamang sa u of x t plus delta x times uh, the partial of u with respect to x evaluated at x t plus delta x squared times second partial derivative of u with respect to x squared evaluated to x t. Ah, nakalimutan ko yung over uh, two factorial dito and so on. Now, actually, what I need is the second partial derivative, right? Uh, the second partial derivative with respect to x. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo ito, ay second derivative yung kailangan kong palitan dun sa equation number one. Well, how do I do that? Well, uh, gagamit ako ng centered formula. So actually, uh, kailangan ko tong extend hanggang gusto kay second order. Uh, para mag-match dun sa alam ko na convergence uh, requirement o dun sa CFL condition. Hindi ko kasi alam yung CFL condition para sa isang first order method, kaya ang gagamitin ko para kay you ay isang second order method. Um, siguro, hopefully, ito ay mas maging clear yung sagot ko sa question ni uh, Jehan kanina. No? So, dagdag ko lang yung um, mga kulang na derivatives. Okay, this is three factorial, third derivative, uxt plus step size to the fourth over fourth factorial over four factorial times the fourth derivative of u with respect to x evaluated at xt and so on. And then I want a centered formula, so. Kukunin ko yung one step back, expansion one step back. So, um, ang mangyayari lang naman dito ay lahat ng, oops, lahat ng delta x dito, papalitan ko ng negative delta x. Okay. So, lahat ng, lahat ng uh, delta x, papalitan ko ng negative delta x. So, this will be a negative I won't have a problem with this. Now I'll have a problem with this guy because it's going to be negative delta x cubed. Siya. So that's going to be negative delta x cubed. And then I'll have no problem with this guy. And the same pattern will go on here. So I'm going to adjustment in signs. But when I add these two guys, so let's add them up. Uh, or should I add them up? Uh, so I'm cancel. Yeah. Add ko sila, so magkakaroon na ng u x plus delta x comma t plus u x minus delta x comma t I equal chi this guy plus that guy that's going to be twice u of x t this guy and that guy they will cancel each other out then I'll have this guy plus this guy so that will be a full Delta x squared, second derivative with respect to u, x squared, x t. And then the third derivatives, they will cancel each other out. So, mawawala siya. So, matitira itong so fourth derivative. So, I'll have plus uh -huh, delta x to the fourth over 12 times derivative ni uh, fourth derivative na to, no? or fourth partial ni u with respect to x, x, t. And of course, some more terms in here. Now I'm going to solve for the second derivative, the second partial derivative, kasi siya yung kailangan ko dun sa equation 1 natin. So that means I'll have uh, this guy. I equal sa u x plus delta x comma t minus 2 u x t plus 2 x minus delta x comma t all over uh, wala pa palang all over pero i-divide ko na both sides sa ah. ito oops para mawawala na siya and then this guy plus ito yung error term ano? uh Kasi ayoko nang isali yung fourth derivative. Why, why do I want uh, to truncate it right away at the fourth derivative? 
because I don't have any data about the fourth derivative, right? Meron akong data ng u of x t because in this numerical differentiation formula, I'm assuming that I have access to function values. So this guy can stay, this guy can stay, this guy can stay because I'm assuming I have data for them. Uh, this can stay only because this is what I'm looking for. So I hope I have second partial derivative because that's what we have in the natin ng formula. But this guy should go away because I don't have access to fourth the value of fourth derivative of u at the point x comma t. And luckily, Taylor's theorem tells us that oh, you can start truncating here at the cost of having an error term here. That is the fourth derivative evaluated at some number psi or c with respect to x comma t, right? Pero since that will just be a constant, though we don't know that constant is, but Taylor's formula tells us that whatever you're truncating here will be of order delta x quantity squared. Why? Because this is assumed to be uh, to be a constant. We don't know its exact value, but definitely by Taylor's theorem, that's going to be a constant. We have a 12 over here, that's a constant. And then we got the formula for the second partial derivative by dividing both sides by its coefficient delta x quantity squared. That's why the fourth power here of delta, of delta x will be divided by the second power of delta x. So matitira lamang isang constant uh, that, only, uh, that you'll have a constant times delta x quantity squared, right? And this would be my replacement for the second derivative with respect to x, yung right-hand side, okay? And then similarly, actually, yung left-hand side, mas madali nga pala yun, kasi remember from our heat diffusion equation, we only have partial, oh, sorry. You only have the partial with respect to t. So, isa lamang tong Taylor series expansion, ngayon ang i-keep ko naman as a constant is the variable x. I will look at the expansion with respect to time. Kaya sabi ko na lang dito, similarly, you can compute that u of x t, oops, sorry, u of x comma t plus delta t equals a u of x t plus delta t times uh, delta or the partial with respect to t of u at x t plus delta t quantity squared times derivative uh, second partial with respect to t then u x t and some more terms right it's an ex uh, it's an infinite expression but again where will i cut this expansion off well my only assumption we have access to function values so this can stay this can stay this can stay solely because our equation calls for a formula for the first partial derivative with respect to t. So this guy must go away. So that tells us na, ah, okay, delta t squared, yung una kong times a constant by the uh, by Taylor's theorem, yung matitira. Pero i-divide ko yan by delta t, so ito ay magiging first order approximation. So this will tell us, if you do the algebra, that delta or the partial derivative of u with respect to t, evaluated at x comma t is u of x comma t plus delta t uh, minus u of x t. Tapos, you divide ko both sides by delta t plus big O of delta t. So, magkaiba yung order, which is possible. Hindi kailangan sa FDS parehas yung order no approximations para dun sa first at saka sa second partial derivatives. Ah, dun sa derivative with respect to time at saka sa derivative with respect to space. So, this can, we can use these expansions into our formula. So, therefore, uh, our FDS for equation one is as follows. Remember, equation one. Left hand side, partial of u with respect to t. So, ito lang yung gagamitin ko para sa kanya. Okay. Equals diffusion constant d times second partial derivative with respect to x. But we will, but we resolve to use this formula for the second uh, partial derivative or an estimate for the second partial derivative. So, I'm going to have this one over here. And so that would be our estimate. 
Then siguro to present it in a more compact form, gamitin ko yung mga subscript notations natin kanina. So I'll use uh, use uh, uh -huh. Uh, hold on, guys. Excuse me for 30 seconds. Okay, so let me introduce uh, some formulas here. So let u of x sub j, uh, sorry, x sub i e sub j to be denoted by u sub i j. Then we can do this. I can write this equation as what? U of i comma j plus one. So constant kasi yung x. So at a particular x value, iko combo ko siya sa time value plus one step forward. So kaya j plus one yung ginamit ko. Kasi that's one step forward in time. Minus u i j. Okay. Nandun tayo sa current x value at current time value divided by delta t equals d times with a u of i plus 1 comma j minus 2 u i j plus 2 um, i minus 1 comma j. Uh, that's uh, u sub i minus 1 because we are at the current time or we are one step backward from the current x value. So current x value not in by the by uh, by default, I x, so nasa u sub i tayo, but we need to step one, once, uh, we, we need to do one step backward, so kaya i minus one siya, so one step in our discretization uh, mesh to the left, tapos current time value, so j yung second subscript niya, all over delta x quantity squared. And then now uh, I can solve for, I can do the algebra. And write it as u sub i comma j plus one i equal kai la hill time na so let's go to copy and go na lang yung nasa notes ko ano pero simple algebra lang naman to algebraic manipulation sa kabaka sumabit pa ako no? so this is equal to uh, d times u sub i plus one minus two u i j plus u sub I minus one comma j plus u i j. Okay, where little d is uh, what is little d? Little d is capital D times delta t over delta x quantity squared. Para lang mas make sense. And I can further rewrite it as d times u sub i plus one plus one minus two d u sub i j plus d u sub i minus one comma j. And this should be true. I going from I going from one to capital M and j going from one to capital N. So ito yung ating uh, finite difference scheme. Actually, ito lang palang nasa dulo, u i j plus one. So next meeting, we'll look at the machine implementation of this particular problem. So magma MATLAB tayo next time uh, para implement to. Pero ang general idea dito sa pagka setup ko nitong equation. Look at the left hand side. So uh, sorry, the right hand side. The right hand side na wala yung j dito. The the values at the right hand side are all at the j -th moment in time, right? So they are the j -th moment. So temperature at neighboring grid points or neighboring discretization points at a particular time j. Tapos ang insight na binibigay sa atin nitong FDS na to ay yung temperature at the central point x sub j. So parang ganito yung itsura niya. Ito si x sub j. Uh, ito si x sub i. Ito si x sub i minus 1. Ito si x sub i plus 1. Titingnan natin sa time t sub j ano yung temperature. You get this temperature, you get that temperature, you get that temperature. So for some reasons, we're going to get those temperature values. And what the highlighted equation tells is that using those three information, 
plus the diffusion constant, plus the step size in time and space, we're going to find what's the temperature at the next time step at t sub j plus 1. So basically, ang sinasabi ng highlighted equation, pag alam mo yung temperature at the current time, sa point x sub j, at dun sa dalawa niyang kapitbahay, kaya natin compute yung temperature para dun sa point x sub, j, uh, x sub i, on the next time step. That's basically what this is doing. That's why we call it an explicit time marching algorithm, right? Explicit siya kasi lahat ng nasa left hand side ay at the moment, uh, at the current moment, T sub J, naka isolate sa isang side lamang ng equation, yung moment J plus one. And it is, uh, 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 it's a time marching kasi nga one step forward tayo in time. Pero para magawa yun, kailangan natin yung temperature dun sa dalawang kapitbahay ni X sub I. So we'll see how we can implement this. Actually, it's quite a simple implementation, So, but we'll play with MATLAB, and we will also look at what's the convergence requirement or what's a necessary condition. Actually, that will, uh, that will be about, uh, uh, that will be dependent on the constant little d, which is your uh, diffusion constant uh, times delta t over delta x squared. To, uh, to have a chance na maging convergent siya. Pero necessary condition yung ibibigay ko kasi, so wala pa siya nung, uh, hindi pa rin tayo sure, pero at least that's our best guess for, for, for convergence, all right? So uh, let's stop here uh, unless you have some clarificatory questions. So uh, habang nag-isip kayo ng tanong, uh, nabanggit ko na rin to kanina, pero siguro on... Uh, I'll keep it short na lang on Friday on Thursday kasi I I have another another uh, another class ng 5 p.m. so siguro may silang MATLAB implementation na lang talaga nitong finite difference scheme and then I'll talk also about the problem set and then I'll talk to with the, uh, I'll talk with the other uh, instructors in the course if they can allow me to re, to uh, to set the deadline for the problem set corresponding to this section or to this session of the course, siguro January na, para para hindi kayo masyadong ma, matambakan. You know? So siguro kahit sa last day of finals, apat lang naman kayo, so kaya ko pa rin naman siyang checkan before the final grade is due. But I need to talk to them first kung papayagan nila ako kasi, or kahit ako na lang yung magko-compute ng final grade, ibigay na lang nila sa akin yung ano. Yung, yung grades nyo mula sa kanila. Para lang pumayag sila na January na yung deadline natin. But I'll, I'll tell you on Friday exactly what the problem set is. All right? Okay. Any questions? I know yung iba may classify right after this. Questions? Clarifications? So kung wala na, thank you guys for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of the night. And then let's talk again on Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.